She held my hand. It's the spring of 2003. My divorce has just been finalized. I'm living in a crummy apartment with my Lhasa Apso, who actually precipitated the divorce. I'm, I have exactly three items in my apartment. I have a kitchen table that my ex-wife hated. I have an uncomfortable futon, which she despised. And I have the bed that we bought during the first year of our marriage, which, like her husband, she has gotten rid of and replaced as quickly as possible. I am 30 years old, and that's how I feel. I feel old. I feel like I've hit this reset button on my life, and I have lost the chance to have a woman in my life for the rest of it. And the problem is, is I haven't been dating for 10 years, so I don't realize how terrible men have become in the last 10 years. I don't understand that, like, the fact that I have a full-time job and reasonable personal hygiene is, like, an enormous benefit to my dating possibilities. Like, the last time I was dating, you had to have, like, a cool car and dance moves, and you had to, like, withhold orgasm as long as possible. And now my 401k is better than all of those things combined. But I don't realize this. And I just see this, like, loneliness and this emptiness in front of me. And my friends see it, too, and they start asking me to go out with them after the divorce. And every time I go out, I end up as, like, the third wheel or the fifth wheel or the seventh wheel. So finally I say, no, I don't want to go out. And then I eventually tell them that I'm dating a girl, which is kind of true. Her name is Jay, and she is on the short-lived series Wonderfalls. She's the fictional character Jay on Wonderfalls. But it comes on Friday nights at 9. And so I decide I'm going to date this fictional character on this television show and tell my friends I'm dating her because she's like the coolest girl I could imagine, and she doesn't create problems for me because like at 9.30 she's gone, and that's it. But then they start moving the show around, and I can't find Jay anymore, and it's not easy for me. And there's, there's another girl who's like as good as Jay. Her name is Alicia Green. And I work with her. I'm a school teacher, and so is she. But Alicia is impossible for me to date. She is harder for me to date than the fictional character on the television show. She's four years younger than me, but she feels like she's ten years younger than me. She has, like, these amazing dinner parties for all the cool people in our school, and I am never invited. She was once engaged, and she broke off the engagement three months before the marriage, which, in my mind, makes her, like, the most badass woman in the world. And she would be the girl that I would... I could see for the rest of my life, but she also has a boyfriend. She has a long-term boyfriend. She's been with him for a year. So it's not a possibility for me. But one day she comes to me and she asks me, can you bring me to the garage to pick up my car tomorrow? And I say, yes. Like, Alicia Green is going to be in my car. The drive is like four minutes from the school, but it's a big deal. And so I go home that night, I clean the car, I Febreze it. It's like perfect. And we make the trip, and I turn the four-minute ride into six minutes because I take the long way around to the garage... And on the way, I ask her what she's doing this weekend, hopeful. And she says, I'm spending it with my boyfriend. But then she tells me that she's also doing her taxes. And she's never done them before. Her father's always done them, but he can't do them this year. And so I say, do you want me to do your taxes? And she says, yes. And, like, doing someone's taxes is, like, financially seeing them naked. And I'm just, I'm, <laughs> it's another opportunity. And so we sit down, and it's a 1040 easy. It should take five minutes. But I turn it into an hour. And... So I spend an hour with Alicia Green, the girl I should never be able to spend any time with. And this funny thing happens. We become friendly, and we start saying hi in the halls. And then we slowly, over the course of the year, we actually become friends. And she still has her boyfriend, and she's still completely unattainable, but we talk. And there's a night when we're waiting for the talent show, and I take her to Chili's, which is a terrible... Never take a girl to Chili's. <laughs> but I do. It's our first dinner together, and... We, um, and we talk, and I tell her stories about my life. And then she starts calling me on nights that her boyfriend isn't around. And we have these, you know, those calls, like, from 9 till midnight where we just start talking. And I start to think, like, could Alicia Green be a person who's going to be in my life forever? And it really is impossible because she loves her boyfriend, and she's just so much cooler than I will ever be. But she gives me hope that it won't be Alicia but there might be another girl at some point in my life. And then she calls me one day and she asks me, she says, I want to go hiking. Do you know a place to go hiking? And I think it's for her and her boyfriend. And I say, yeah, there's a great place. And I tell her, and she says, great, let's go on Saturday. And so we're going to go for a hike. And 
I'm starting to think like maybe this girl likes me, but I'm like the rational part of me says like she doesn't because she's got a boyfriend and she's much cooler than I will ever be. And she truly is the best person in the world. She's better than the fictional character. She's but great. And so we go on this hike up this mountain. It's Mount Carmel. It's across the street from Queen Quinnipiac Uni- University. It's got a castle on the top of the mountain. And so we go hiking up the switchback. And as we're going up, we're talking. And we're talking like I would be talking to a girl on a date, even though I'm, no, I'm not on a date. We get to the top. We're sitting in the castle. There's these little windows. We're sitting, and our thighs are touching. And I'm like 15 now, and I'm like, wow, our thighs are touching. Like this, <laughs> It could be something someday for us. And I know it's not. I'm being ridiculous. But again, it's giving me hope that there could be a girl at some point in my life like Alicia again. I could love again. And we're coming down the mountain, and we're talking some more, and suddenly Alicia reaches out and she grabs my hand. And I hold tight because I think she's like lost her footing on the, on the hard scrabble, and I look, and she hasn't lost her footing. And I look at her face, and she smiles at me. And she answers the question that I didn't have the guts to ever ask. Are you a person who I could spend my life with? And she doesn't let go of my hand for the whole hike down the mountain. And 15 years later, she is still holding my hand, except for the times that I am holding my daughter's hand, Clara, who is six, and our son's hand, Charlie, who is three. Thank you. Thank you.